Hey, Giant fans. Welcome to the Giant Insider Podcast. My name is Jerry Foley. I'm the senior editor of the Giant Insider newspaper, and with me, as always, is the beat writer, the heart of Giants Nation. Nobody beats the biz. Chris Bizignan. Chris, before we get started, just want to give a shout out and a thank you uh, to our sponsor, Fitzpatrick's, Fitzpatrick's Crest Tavern, located at 9600 Pacific Avenue in Diamond Beach. They have a huge selection of spirits, including 21 beers on taps. Uh, in, on tap. Oh my God, what is wrong with me, guys? Sorry. Uh, many of which are from local microbreweries in the South Jersey area. They have 18 widescreen TVs and the NFL Sunday ticket, along with a bunch of appetizers, including Cape May salts and Delaware Bay oysters. My favorite, the Mardi Gras shrimp, baked grouper, linguine and mussels, and broiled or fried flounder. So if you find yourself vacationing on the South Jersey shore, head over to Fitzpatrick's Crest Tavern and tell the owner, Sam Fitzpatrick, the giant insider sent me. Another one of our listeners went there this weekend, so that's pretty awesome. The best shuck in town. And guys, if you were watching the game there or watching the game anywhere, hopefully you didn't. Uh, hopefully you were able to keep your food down last night because, um, look, uh, Chris had him losing a close one. I had him winning a close one. Uh, I did not see that coming. Uh, it's the same issues that have plagued uh, this organization for a long time. The, off the offensive line was just absolutely <coughs> horrific. Uh, Jones didn't have much of a chance, but when he did have a chance, he didn't make plays. I guess the defense played well, but they, you know, look, they gave up a horrible, horrible long play to Noah Fant. Uh, I joked that when, um, when Locke came into the game, that it was going to be trouble. And it was for the brief time that he was in, but, uh, look, uh, right now, Chris, it's they're one in three. It's ugly. This was a must win. As you called it, they did not win. Now you have Miami and Buffalo waiting. Um, and the season mm. is unraveling before our eyes, bud. Yeah, spiraling out of control. That's what I said. If they lose this game, this season could spiral out of control. And that's the way it's going right now. Right? Yeah, yeah. This, uh, I mean, and it's not even like they're losing close games and they're getting some unfortunate breaks. They're getting smoked. Yeah. They're getting smoked, you know. Yeah. So this is this, this team right now is at rock bottom. I think it's safe to say. And, um, and this season, uh, with so much promise, uh, is going down to, you know, a lot pretty fast. I mean, yeah. what can you say? Uh, it's, it's, offensive line just cannot block anybody, you know? And that includes Evan Neal, basically, too. Uh, Zidu kind of came down to earth last night. He got schooled. Uh, McCathin struggled. Smith's got, you know, he went out early in the game. Uh, Brennison came, you know, and all that. They just look to having problems picking up twist. Uh, they look like they have some communication issues going on or some scheme issues with Bobby Johnson, what he wants them to do. Um, and they're just not playing well. Look, you know, I had a guy last night in the press box, Joe. He said to me, uh, well, you know, it was a, you know, Zuto's not a tackle. First of all, he played tackle in college a lot. So stop with that crap. You know, oh, you know, uh, you know, McCathy is a, really like a rookie and this and that. I said, guys, I two guys at halftime were eating him. They, they said that to me, and I said, uh, hey, guys. I said, are you watching this football game? Yeah, what do you mean? I said, are you watch, Are you looking at Seattle's offensive line right now? Yep, yeah. They have four backups in the game. Four. And Evan Brown, a journeyman, that was here for a cup of coffee with the Giants. Okay? Oh, well, yeah, whatever the hell he was here. I said, are they dysfunctional out there? Well, they're not really doing I said, are they dysfunctional out there? Do they look like a team that just came off the street that can't block or can't pick up a twist? Well, I guess not. Uh, you know, maybe not. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> they're functional, right? Are they going to put 400 yards on, on the Giants defense, which played well the Giants did? No, but the point was that, okay, so now you have Evan Brown playing left guard. You got two draft picks at center and right guard. Are they dysfunctional? No, they weren't. Are the Giants dysfunctional? Well, yeah, they're giving up a lot of heat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every pass Daniel goes back, he's getting killed. So, yeah, the guys, I, are I, not, the guys are just not blocking. Yeah, there were a couple. There were a couple of times in that game, Chris, where it looked like of all the bad offensive line play we've seen over the last ten years, and and you hate to compare it, but it, it was some of the worst you've ever seen. I mean, eleven sacks, ten on Jones. It looked like they. It, it looked like they would have better off if they just dropped to their 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 feet and uh, dropped to their knees and 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 hopefully they tripped over them. I've never seen anything like that. And Evan Neal, I don't know if he, if he's in his own head. Um, I I just I go back to the fact that this guy was so highly touted and recruited. Um, he was he was such a 
going to be such a high draft pick. Um, there was talk of him being the one overall for, for the Jaguars and to see what we saw last night. I, I don't know. I don't get it. I, I'm not, I don't understand what's wrong with him. I don't know if it's coaching. I don't know if it's psychological now because to, to drop that far off to where he doesn't look, even look like he belongs in the league right now. Like last night, he just, he looked, that was one of the worst I've ever seen him. Um, you know, McKeith and Izudu, they're, they're, it is what it is. They, they, they didn't play well, but Neil to me is it really stood out and I like him. I, I want him to do well, but oh my God, he was he was atrocious last night, Chris. He's I, not getting better. And he's not getting better. I yeah. blame Bobby Johnson some of that too. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming coaches for guys that can't block, but you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta coach up technique and everything, bro. You know, and I don't see any improvement in this line at all on the Bobby Johnson's tutelage. And and I don't know what the hell's going on. What's the answer? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I know is that they can't, you know, they just can't block up front. Last night was an absolute debacle. I mean, Daniel gets, I mean, this is the only team I ever saw that has a wide receiver sack. I mean, you know, they throw, they throw a pass off the Campbell behind the scrimmage. He gets sacked. It gets credit for a sack. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think I ever seen that before. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, you know, Daniel, Daniel gets sacked 10 times. Uh, the 11th was, um, you know, Paris Campbell. He gets sacked 10 times. He gets hit 14 more times. He yeah. escapes numerous sacks with his legs. Gets hit more times running. I mean, and on top of that, he, he makes a couple of real bad decisions. We all know with the Witherspoon one. And you know what? Look, this is the bottom line, Jerry. When you get belted around like that for four quarters, you know you're going to start being a little... Looking down, looking left, look. So it, it's just natural, man. You, you're waiting to get hit, and it's going to yeah. affect you. Now I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you, it's only natural. And Daniel, but Daniel wasn't good either, you know. Yeah, what bothers me with him is when he rolls right and he's about to run out of bounds. First off, don't run out of bounds a yard behind. It's I'm tired of seeing that. Just get rid of it. And then he he almost tries to make a play. It's like Daniel, just throw it at it, throw it away, throw it away. Yeah. Don't okay. throw it across. There were a couple of times, like there was one. A real ugly one last night where he got a little lucky. Like I could have been picked. Oh god, it's just yeah. disaster's gonna happen. Like don't do yeah. that, you know. And look, man, you know what um, bothered me? A yeah, little bit, Jerry. A yeah. lot of things bother me, but we'll get into the quarters of what happened in the game. Devin Witherspoon after the game, oh, was interviewed. Yeah, and they asked him about, I guess the Giants, whatever. And he goes, "Yeah, well, part of our game, our game plan, part of our game plan was that we knew, we knew Jones." Stares down his first read. Unbelievable. And I was like, oh man, that's not good. You know, and that's what yeah. Witherspoon did. He was he was kind of staring down Campbell and Witherspoon kind of jumped it. It was a bad throw, but yeah. Um, and he took it the other way, you know. So it's 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 the, this offense. Do you realize, Jerry, there's only two teams in the NFL that, that hasn't had a possession this year with the lead? That's the Giants I don't know. I couldn't tell you who the other one is. The Jets. <laughs> the Giants and Jets have not had a possession. Yeah, that's right. With the lead. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, that's that yeah. says it all. You know, blown yeah. out three uh, a couple of home games, national primetime game. I wish they would just say, no, we're not doing primetime. Yeah, stop. Yeah, stop. Uh, so and what's you know, so they get into it, they come out, they run the ball a little bit, they move the they move the ball down the field. Dable decides not to go for the field goal and grant points. I I, I kind of Wanted the points there. I got to be honest, Chris. I, I we had the watch party. Everybody wanted the points. Everybody wanted the points. Okay, I'm glad. I didn't know that. I'm glad. Yep. You know, Said the I kind of wanted to grab the points. Get the Put points. The Take ball. the points. You yes. haven't had the lead all year. The only right. time you have when they, well, the only time the Giants have led this year is when Goodell kicked the field goal against Arizona. Yep. Okay, so I was like, I was kind of like, all right, you move the ball a little bit. Yeah. Grab the points, but Dave's decides to go for it, be aggressive, and they get stuffed with the with the latest. You yeah, know, the craze. Craze of the tush push, brotherly shove, whatever the hell they call this play now, right? Which should be illegal. Okay. Yeah, rugby. So, and I think the rook, I think the committee, the rules committee in this whole season is going to ban that. I really do. They were thinking about it last year. I think it's just so out of control. Yeah. They should be banned. That's a whole other subject for a whole other day. So they don't make it. The Giants are probably like the one of the 32, probably only like one or two teams that don't actually make that first down, but they don't make it. The defense played, looked at, this one doesn't fall on the defense. I know they, they made that one breakdown. They had that one breakdown. Yeah. 
And they missed two tackles. How? how I don't know. Along the sideline. Yeah, push him out of bounds. Oh, my. I think me and you could have pushed a guy out oh, of bounds. God. You know? Come on. And that made a 14 3 before half and all that. But the defense allows only 300 yards. Gino, not a factor. Even Walker, he had, I know he had that big run at the end that kind of padded his stats a little bit. Uh, not really a factor. Uh, but it came down to what? Daniel strip sack, fumble, sets him up for a touchdown. They, they do get the one big play, make a 14 3. And then the Giants looking to cut it to 14 10. And Witherspoon picks that ball off. And that's the end of the story. So turnovers. Offense is horrific. Can't really run the ball. Uh, Daniel, look, Daniel, Jerry, you look at these routes. You look what Daniel's doing. Yeah, you I want to ask you. I want to ask you. See what they're doing. That. They, they oh. just get rid of the ball quick. They just. Uh, yeah. I, I got to ask you about this because I saw you tweet it, but everyone was talking about it. Um, oh, really? Which one, was <laughs> Which one was no, it? No, no. <laughs> like, you know, he's dropping back and he's. There's, there were times early where he had time. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. you're like, no one's open. Yeah, nobody so, was open, Jerry. Why? What's go- Are they doubling or, or just no well, one's open? I'll tell you why. Uh, you want to talk some real facts. And, like, yeah. let's, let's, I know a lot of people are excited in training camp. and Whoa, we got this. We got that. Well, Jerry, I, you know, obviously you know I was there. And Seattle was doing nothing exotic. They, they played basically a covered shell. They'll, they'll yeah. go into a one at times. But yep. they were just playing basically zone, Jerry. They really were. At times they play man with Woolen and uh, they they that phenomenal rookie with a spoon. Michael Jackson, they don't trust. They play a lot of zone, you know. Well, anyway, and I'm watching it, Jerry. And there's just I'm there was some plays I was specifically just watching the receivers in the secondary, and they won't open. They won't. It wasn't like Daniel was missing guys wide open, and you know, he decided to winds up taking a sack or he gets rid of whatever the hell he ran, whatever the hell it might have been. But guys won't open, dude. Yeah. And white guys aren't open. A lot. Well, let's, you know, you look at this receiving group and look, Isaiah Hodgins was a nice story last year. Okay. They pick him up. Buffalo releases him. They pick him up. He does a lot of good things. But Isaiah Hodgins now has tape on him. He's a three receiver, two tops. Chris, basically, he's a th- he might be a three at best. Basically a three. Yeah. Okay. So he's yeah. kind of come down to earth a little bit. Um, you know, Slayton is a two. What the point I'm getting at? Highest feeling is where he got more snaps yesterday. But yeah. you know, highest game they just can't get him because you, you can't do a five step drop. You're gonna get killed. There's no time. There's just no time. Uh, Paris Campbell's proven just to be that. You know, just okay. Paris Campbell can't, that's can't nice. stay on his feet. It's very annoying to watch. Uh, Shep is not part of the offense at all. Wondell Robinson is. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there's no alpha male receiver, Jerry. Right. There's no alpha male. Like, Seattle doesn't have one. They have two. Yeah, right. The Giants don't have that. They don't have that. Um, and and look, and there'll be some games like, you know, Hodgins touchdown Minnesota. But when you're playing against a well-coached team like Seattle, and Pete Carroll does an unbelievable job with that defense. And it's not, nothing exotic, but he's very smart, Carroll, the way he approaches it. Yeah. Um, what What do you mean by that, Chris? Well, you know, Jerry, when they were when they couldn't get when they couldn't do any more five step drops, they were getting killed, Daniel. Mm. So what happens is Pete sees this and his defense coordinator sees this and they start pinching the field. What do you mean by pinching the field, Chris? Well, that means they just start squeezing the windows. They start coming in. They know you can't go over the top on them. Yeah. So the space becomes limited. So you, you know, even the ten yard, th- Jerry Daniel Jones attempted only two. I know. 10 plus yard passes last night. Yeah. Two. Yeah. So they were they were jumping those little five yard outs, flats, little out. You know, they were they were pinching the field, Seattle. So even those little bullshit routes, little, 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 little stick routes or little hooks, you know, they couldn't do that because they weren't even finding the space to do that because Seattle kind of pinched the field. They're very smart. They're very well coached team, bro. Yeah. Okay. So the out, you know, the, the 10 plus the Taking the shots, they won't worry about that anymore. So that was taken away from them. And like you said, and uh, and like you said, the tweet I put out that you guys were talking about it on the uh, watch party, it was true. There was times Daniel had time. You see him; he was looking left, and it was just nobody open. Yeah. And this is- yeah, and that's and that's what I wanted to know. Like it was like, why is he is he not finding? And then right away we went to Twitter. I'm like, oh, Chris saying they're not open, guys, and everyone's like, oh, come on. They're like, hmm. but yeah. Um, 
What what I um now I'm not saying every play I can I'm you know, I'm so now yeah, no, no. you know yeah. there's a lot of people that sit on Twitter oh I'll try to find someone that does no, something wrong it was they a play where they sit around all day and they try to find something yeah. so they can point it out on Twitter oh you're wrong here yes, like some yeah. buffoon just put on Twitter about Donnie Holmes oh uh, oh you're lying he did play he was on special teams with a punt well guys I'm talking about defense right I and mean, in that case they caught a cough and plays thirty snaps every game. I mean, I mean, you know, it's, yeah. you know, so somebody else, sure, fine. I know, I know, you know, oh, look, Chris, here's a guy. I'm not saying every play, but I'm just telling you in basic. Yeah. Okay. They won't, they won't, guys won't open, you know, when they what? did the rare time, they, they did have time. I can ask you a question. Did you feel the same way I did that when John Michael Schmitz went down, mm -hmm. albeit four games into his career, that the Giants were going to be in trouble? Uh, yeah, I thought they were going to be in trouble, <laughs> even with Schmitz, if Schmitz played. You know, I just but it was it. like the the drop off is oh no, oh, yeah, sure, uh, right away. Like already, Chris, he's our second best lineman. <laughs> and he went down, and yeah. I just thought, oh yeah. my god, here we go. Yeah. So, uh, Jerry, I got to be honest with you, I I, <laughs> I was questioning this season when Andrew Thomas actually got hurt trying to chase yeah. down a, a return on a block kick or field goal. I yeah. said this is not a good sign, and he's yeah. still out with the injury. Okay. Yeah. You, so you kind of hope it's not one of those type of years. It's only four games, and you kind of hope they could turn this around. The guys have to play better. The guys have to coach better. Daves has got to coach better. Kafka has got to coach better. Wink has got to coach better. You know. Um. So the, you know the fourteen three, and you know, and Daniel throws the pick, and that's the end of the game. But just couldn't really get anything going. Um. I thought the defense did a pretty good job against a good offense, Jerry. You know. Um. They only gave up two sixty five. Not on one play, of course. You know you can't have that. But overall, it, it, this isn't on them. No, no, it's not. You know? No, the offense was uh, – was. I, I tell you what, dude. Not um, professional. You know, I was in the locker room last night after the game. I'm next to Dexter Lawrence, you know. And, and Dex was being pretty honest. You know, Dex was like, you know, we got to get some guys' attention here. Leaders got to lead. And I asked him, you know, I said, you know Dex, I said, uh, what do you mean by that? You know, leaders yeah. got to lead. Like, what exactly are you referring to? Like, do you feel guys aren't getting a message, you know? He hesitated a little bit, and he was like, uh, well, I just think, you know, leaders got to step up and get some guys' attention and this and that. Huh? You know, you read between the lines and you say, well, why is he saying that, Dex? You know, Dex is trying to be that alpha male. You could see, Jerry. He's trying to take over that locker room Good. and be that alpha male. Someone you know? has to. Because the Giants really don't have that. No, they don't. They don't On have either that. Side of the, either side of the ball, they don't. They just don't have that alpha male. So, and, and you know what? And a, and a role player can't be an alpha male. Sorry. It has to be one of your better players that has to step up and go, hey, what the F are we doing out Why? Here? Who do you think is the role player that is? Is there, do you have someone in mind? Or? No, no, no. Because some, you know, I was talking to somebody before from the Giants. Oh, okay. And they were talking about Nick Gates, you know, and, oh, yeah. and they were saying that, boy, Nick wouldn't stand for this crap. He'd be cracking somebody over the head in the field. Or he'd be in the locker room and go, what the F are we doing? Yeah. He would be like that alpha guy. And I said to the guy, I said, yeah, no, I miss Nick in the locker room. He's like that, you know. Even the crap of Gino, that, you know, Nick would have been looking to smash somebody's head over the last night, you know. Yeah. I said, the problem with that is that Nick was just a decent player. He was just an offensive lineman. He wasn't right. one of the stars. You need one of your better players yeah. to step up and be an alpha male. You know, and, and I, you know, Xavier McKinney just, I don't know what the hell he's doing. I don't either. And even last night again. He comes out and he's like, uh, well, we don't care what anybody says outside his locker room. You know, once again, he's not, you know, people are attacking him. On Sending a horrible it. message. I, I, you know, I like, get uh, it, but man, come I on. I kind of get what he's saying. And just like last week when he says, you know, uh, we'll, you know, this tackle, we know, we, we know we're a good tackle team. I'm not going to stress over it and stuff like that. You know, and then, okay, you're not going to stress over it. But last night, two guys, Akurike and Jackson, Adoy Jackson, who, by the way, will be here. He will be not be a giant next year, Adoy Jackson. A Kirkie and Adoree Jackson missed two easy tackles, and a guy goes to the one yard line. Yeah, are you stressing now over it? At what point do you start to stress over it, Xavier? You know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Fans don't want to hear that crap. No, they don't. When you're one and three and you can't tackle people, now the tackling was better last night, and I put on Twitter only ten tackles, and I meant that as like for this team that was good. You know? Yeah, ten missed three. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jerry. Ten missed tackles. You know? Yeah. For this yeah. team, that's good. That's a that's a big improvement. They did tackle better last night, but they also did miss two key ones. You know, on that on that big play, you can't have that. Um, All right, guys, we're gonna take a break and be right back after this. We're already twenty minutes in. You're listening to the John Insider Podcast. Hang on. And we're back, folks. You're listening to the John Insider Podcast with Jerry Foley and Chris 
Nobody beats the Biz, Biz Ignano. Uh, somebody else is not going to be here next year. I thought he did not play well. Uh, Leonard Williams. Um, I don't I don't know what's going on with him. I, I look, defensive tackles stats sometimes are misleading, but he's he's getting blown up. And I, it's it's surprising, you know. I don't look at defensive tackles and say only oh, had two tackles. Like, no, what impact did he have on the game? You know, that's where you watch a guy and say, what's you know, he doing? You're just, right, dude. You're right. You're right. Give me a <laughs> place. Yeah. Who's making an impact play? Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. four games. No, zero turnovers. And they could have used a few last night because the offense was so bad. And it was still in the game until Daniel threw that pick six. Yeah. So you look at your guys and you say, oh, on defense, who's our impact guys? Well, I'm not going to look at Banks yet. I'm not looking. Forget about it, Dory. He had, I think he's had three picks in his whole career. Um, yeah. I'm looking at Xavier. Well, he's supposed to be an impact guy, right? I don't even know he was even playing last night. Okay. Oh, he's he's he's, he's disappeared, Chris. Uh, Leo, supposed to be an impact guy. I saw him getting blown off the ball by a fourth-round pick a few times last night in running plays. Not all the time, you know. Dex, well, Dex is one of the impact guys, but he's not making impact plays yet. He's getting right. some quarterback hits, but at least he's actually showing up. Right. Okay. Okay. Who else? Chris, well, Thibodeau. Okay. Well, so kudos to Tibbs. Yeah. He played his best game last night. He had a couple of sacks. He almost had a pick six. And early on, Chris, <laughs> Ojolari calls two penalties. That's impact to me. And Again, he, didn't, he didn't keep it up, but he, he came, early on, he caused the holding and he called the, I caused the false start, I believe. Yeah. And as, he pushed, and he pushed the first sack into Thibodeau. So it's like, okay. Right. So he's made a little. So, right. so Aziz wasn't played except for one game. He made a little impact. Tibbs right. did, no doubt. Right. Tibbs played his best game. Yeah. Um, Aziz definitely, you know, off the edge. He had like four pressures, I think, if yeah. I remember right. I think I wrote, I put it on Twitter. Before. I think he had four pressures. Hmm. Uh, I, I was talking with Aziz in a game. You know, he's he, he, he he's pissed. He felt he got there a few times. He came close. Okay, but the stop like the. The suppose the so so called stars of this defense. We don't have any stars in this defense, but the so called stars of this defense is Leo Williams, McKinney, and Dex, and uh, you Thibodeau. know, and I guess Thibodeau. Although I don't because of, of, dra- of his draft status. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. So Tibbs kind of stepped up last night, no question. And what did he do last night? So all I hear about for last week is all this. Oh, the quarterback gets it out too quick. That's why Tibbs is not getting there. The quarterbacks are getting out two point five seconds. Oh no! Oh, 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 oh. Excuses, excuses, excuses. That's all I hear. That's all I hear. And I've been trying to tell people on this podcast, and I've been Jerry. You know the way I feel. And I and I put it on Twitter. Stop with the effing excuses and beat your man. Yeah. Beat your man. Yep. Even if the guy unloads it in two point three seconds, okay? You crack him. That's still disrupting the play. I'm sick of hearing, oh, you know, the, you know the, uh, Brock Purdy gets it out quick, and this guy gets it out quick. You know, Well, you beat your man clean, you're going to get there. Yeah. And I'm watching the Washington game. I know you I know you know where I'm going to go with this. I put it on Twitter and all that crap. You know, and I'm watching Chase Young line up against Jordan Mal- uh, Malata, line up, be some clean, sack, yeah. or hit yeah. hurts, whatever the hell it was. In this sport, you got to beat your man. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So stop at the bullshit excuses about this, 2.5 seconds, and this, and this, and this crap. Well, last night, what did Thibodeau do? That first sack, he beat his man clean yeah. and drilled Geno Smith. Yep. So Tim stepped up a little bit last night. Yeah, and he almost had a pick six. Um, yeah. It was a good play by him. Yeah. Um, we said before the season, you know, we were like, Maybe you know it sounds it sounds like we're crazy, but here's what has to happen: McKinney, Dexter Lawrence, Thibodeau have to step up this year if this team's going to take a next step forward. And right now, I would say Lawrence is the same to a little under. McKinney yeah, not, is not as good as last year. Right, McKinney yeah. is is absent, absolutely absent. Uh, yeah, he ain't stressed and, enough. You know, and, and Thibodeau had a good game. Like he's probably where he was last year. Maybe a little a little better than last year. Maybe maybe. Again, because for the first four games, um, you know, based on when he when he started playing four games in, I guess he's a little better than he was last year, but not to the level of you know. It's, it's yeah. part of the reason. Again, there's a lot of reasons why we're one and three, but these guys, these leaders, were supposed to step up and take the next step. And to see McKinney playing the way he is, man, it's almost sad. Um, 
like we said, the weird tweets that he sent out, that reaction last night. I, I don't know what's going on with him, man. Um, had such high hopes, but it just seems like it's seems like he's playing his way off this uh, out of a contract right now, dude. And I, I, I'm sorry, I know it's early, a lot can change over the next what 13 games, but <laughs> yeah, well, I mean the we'll way see. he's playing now. And the biggest issue we had, the biggest concern, biggest question mark heading to the season was what? Can the offensive line hold up and let plays let receivers run deep routes with the speed that they have now? Can we do some deep seven routes and deep post and nine routes? And we got Hyatt, we got Campbell, we got Slate, all kinds of speed, right? I didn't even get the Darren Waller. What the hell's going on with him yet? Right? Yeah, I was gonna so ask you that. Too. That was one of the biggest questions. Well, we're getting our answer. No, you can't do it because Daniel's getting killed. They can't yeah. hold up and pass block. Yeah. So Jerry, you gotta let routes develop. If your quarterback is getting two seconds to throw the ball. It's not going to develop. So now you got to do dink and dunk, dink and dunk, dink and dunk, and all that stuff they were doing last night. You brought it up about Waller. One target in the first half. Now you're yeah. watching him from the press box. What's going on there, Chris? Well, he was they... a lot. First of all, they had, they had to use him in the second half to block because nobody yeah. could block, especially when Bellinger went out. Right. You know, Bellinger left in the first series. So Waller was used back. Other times he was covered. Uh, uh, you know, he's just – Jerry, he has to be targeted seven, eight times a game. Yeah, he I would say things, at least. Yeah, he could do things with a ball. You know, he could do things with the ball in his hand too. Even yak, even with five yard outs, five yard little option route, something. Yeah, but a lot of times, you know, I'm not just blaming it on the pass pro. He, I mean, he 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 was talking about it after the game. He was a little upset. I think he feels he wasn't being targeted, and then they had to adjust and use him a lot. They use him a lot on the line because obviously nobody could block on the line, so you have to keep the tight end back. And Bellinger was out. You know. Yeah. So they had him on the outside sometimes while, you know, they moved him around a little bit. But nothing could develop, Jerry, down the field because Daniel's getting killed because he has no time, you know? So, yeah. And then I'm sure there was a few times when maybe Daniel had a few seconds there, whatever, especially in the second half where he's looking at where's he coming from? Where, where am I going to get blasted next? It's only natural, dude. I'm not – you know, it's only natural that when you're getting hit that much – when you get that snap, you're going to be looking a little bit to your right or looking down or whatever, whatever the hell it might be. I'm not making well, it, it, No, it happened with Eli late in his career. It happened with Eli later years. Yeah. Not he'd bail, he would bail out. Yeah, when you get a beating like that in that game, you know. I remember back in uh, whatever year it was when, when, when the Giants were playing the Eagles with Ozzy and Strahan, when Ozzy had like six sacks against Donovan McNabb. I was there. I remember it was a Sunday night game. I remember, I remember the it lights. Was. It was a Sunday night he, game. It was either a Sunday or Monday because I remember no, being Sunday in the game. lights. Sunday night game. And, you know, in the fourth quarter, Donald McNeil was throwing the ball on the ground. He was just looking at where the hell am I going to get hit next? Yeah, yeah. So you're not going to win football games like that. Now, Win we'll Winston see. Justice was that left tackle, I remember. OC killed him. So um, we'll see. You know, Angel comes back. I don't know if Angel's going to be back. And this, if, he, if not, guys have to play better, dude. That's, that's the bottom line. Guys have to play better. All right. Coaching, I got to ask you this. Do you think we're abandoning the run again too early in the game? Like, we're just dropping back. It just seemed like every play was shotgun. I, I mean, it's it's 7 nothing again, and it just seemed like we – I know Barkley's not playing. Now, oh, we're going gonna to pull up stats and we ran more. <laughs> no, because I actually looked this up today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue. yeah. No, no, it just seems like we got away from it right away, and then every play was shotgun, 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 shotgun. Yeah, well, he's mostly in a shock. I, I hate this mostly shotgun. I stuff hate it. I hate it. I wish you would go on the center, Chris, really especially do. when he's really good at play action, right? He's I great think, at it. You know, I'm looking at the first position he ran a little bit. I, I, it's funny you brought this up because I thought they got away from running a little bit too. You know, that I see Daniel did hand off at the second period. Look, you could you could question that, you know. Um, but I mean, especially when they can't pass block and he's getting murdered. Look. You know, they always talk about Breida. You know, Dable loves him, this and that. Well, they were giving him the ball a little bit. You know, he had a couple of chunk yards in the first possession, second, and that was basically it for him. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I thought, look, when you can't pass block, to me, it's like, okay, well, keep feeding him the rock. Let me see if they can right. stop run. Right. And Daniel, but uh, look, this, it hasn't been a good, hasn't been a good season for Mike Kafka except for one half, and we don't even know if he was calling a place in that half, right? I know. Um. So it hasn't been a it hasn't been a functional working unit. Safe to say, right? 
I mean, before uh, this, before the season started, we were worried at like, Oh my God, they're going to take both of our coordinators. And, and it's just funny how for a, a month changes things like, Oh my God, this mm-hmm. is uh it's done a one eighty. Yeah. Yeah. And look on the defensive side of the ball, they made a change. Um, they got Trey Hawkins out of there and they put flat, you know, flats in the slot and the door is on the outside again, you know, yeah. because they just were losing confidence in Trey Hawkins the way he's been playing. Um, so that looks like they're probably going to run with that. Donnie Holmes didn't even get a snap. He didn't, it wasn't even on a field last night. Um, so look, I, I like the way the defense against a good offense. Like I said, it was all, this one's on the offense and Daniel yeah. Kafka, Dable, Jerry, when they ran that ball in third and 11, Mm. I was like, what? I, I was like, are they pulling a Roberto Duran here? Are they throwing in the towel? <laughs> you know? How you do you run the ball there? Third and 11. Yeah. And then you find out after the game, we asked yeah. Dave's about it. And Dable said, well, it was a miscommunication. Daniel thought something else, but it was, it was a pass play. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about this, Jerry, but that can't happen. It's inexcusable. It's inexcusable. Like, it, we, we, we can't perform the basic function of football blocking and, and we have trouble tackling a lot. Mm-hmm. You got to have communication. We at least have to be able to communicate. And it looked like Daniel, it looks like Jones on the sideline. If you could, I, I'm a good lip reader, but someone put it out there. It looked like he said, I didn't know I was throwing or I didn't know. You, I thought you said not to throw. You yeah. I thought you said up. not to throw something like that. Yeah. yeah. And then you yeah. see, and Evan Neal's like, what the F are we doing? You can see he's walking all like, the him. Wonderful. Great. Yeah. Um, so, now, so you got to watch for, you know, finger pointing, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't sense that in the locker room last night. Yeah. Um, I didn't sense about, you know, defense, the offense, you know, especially with Dex, who's one of the leaders. Leo, I was with Leo last night. I, I didn't sense that. I sensed a lot of frustration. Yeah. Um, I could tell you this, sir, you're going to kick out of this. Uh, I was with Isaiah Simmons. And uh, I said to Isaiah, I asked Isaiah, I said, you know, what the hell's going on with Gino there? You know, with that. Yeah, what the, right. pitching, what the hell was he pitching him on you? About? What the hell was that? And he was, oh man, was he? <laughs> he was like, he thought he got up. He's accusing me of hitting him with a cheap shot. And who the f is he think he is? It uh, wasn't. It was a fine. It was a perfect tackle. Isaiah was going. I'm never gonna. He said a few things to me, Isaiah. I'm sorry, folks, but I promise, Isaiah. <laughs> that he said a few things um, about Gino, and I was like, Isaiah. You got my word. I'm not going to say that on social media. And I got to be honest with you. I was like, I don't give a F what you do. Dad, put it on social media, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, right, 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 right. And I said, ah, Isaiah, you know, you might, next day you might be like, damn, I wish I wasn't on social So I'm going to keep it off. I said, but it's between me and you. I said, but um, it's pretty funny, you know? Yeah. And he was, you know, he said Gino was bitching and moaning about it. I said, it wasn't a cheap hit. You hit him on the sideline while he was in play. And you kind of rolled up as you hit him. You rolled up in the back of his legs. It wasn't that like a horse collar or anything. It happens a lot of tackles. tackles. It happens. The guys get hurt accidentally, you know, in tackles like that. You know, it's not intentional. Uh, but so he wasn't a big fan of Geno Smith. <laughs> of course, Isaiah. That goes back to Arizona division games too. Yeah. Not a big fan of him. Um, that was pretty funny. Uh, the way Isaiah was, well, he was pretty hot <laughs> about that. Uh, some guys were showing some. Uh, look, I don't know what to tell you, Jerry. Some guys were. Pissed off, you know, frustrated. Pissed off. A guy like Okereke who comes here. I thought he played pretty well last night. I thought he played his best game. Um, yeah. What's he like in the locker room? Is he pissed off? Like, I'm, I'm not the single. I'm singling him out. I just thought he played well. That's all. Yeah, yeah. No, I was talking with him too. Uh, you know, he wasn't happy about that missed tackle. You know, obviously, he's got to be better. Like you said, he's got to be better. But I think he had a couple of TFLs last night. He was he pretty did. active. No, he was he pretty did. active. Yeah. I think he's getting really. Comfortable with the system. I think you're going to see a better Bobby Okereke as we move along in this system, Jerry. You know, sometimes it takes a few games. I get it. He hasn't been great. He's missed tackles. I get it. But I think you really you saw the Bobby Okereke that I've talked about a lot last night. You know, a guy that's yeah. shoot, shooting those B gaps. Sideline to sideline. Sideline to sideline. I know I know it was a big mistake. He's got to make that but at least push him out of bounds. I get it. But I think no, but overall, him. no, I'm saying I'm not yeah. I'm saying he's more sideline to sideline player. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm wink, if I'm wink. If Bobby doesn't come off the field, if I'm Wink, I get Isaiah, and Isaiah's not coming off the field either anymore. I agree. I agree with that one. He's not Absolutely. coming off the field anymore. Playmaker. On the offensive side, you see that they're starting to uh, 
you know, implement a little bit more of Jalen Hyatt over mm. Isaiah Hodgins. Yeah. Like something I was, you know, talking about Isaiah, you know, not a bad player. Did some good things last year. But when you put stuff on tape, Jerry, yeah, you know, uh, you'd be surprised. You have to adjust yourself, uh, you know, but he just hasn't been a part of this. I know he's got the one touchdown and all that. And I'm not knocking Isaiah, you know, but you see what the Giants are doing here. And then Wandell. I thought Wandell played well. I thought Wandell played well again. Yeah. Um, he did what he was the X to do out of the backfield, right? Even running routes out of the backfield. Uh, yep. Um, and you see you saw last night he was taking snaps away from Paris Campbell. Which know? he should be. Yeah. Which he should be. And I think you're gonna see more. I think you're gonna see Jalen Hyatt more, and you'll see that Slayton Hyatt Wandell package. That's, and that's what you that's what you want. Yeah, I get down well. But Jerry, like, you know, we said this a thousand times that this this these receivers and speed don't mean crap if you can't, you can't win the trenches. Right and right now they just can't block up front. And it doesn't um, get easier, bro. I, I I gotta be honest with you. You know, you look at this Miami team, and and they're gonna be wild up. You no, know, they lost to Buffalo. They're gonna be looking to get back on track next week. And then Buffalo team in two weeks is a team that I thought was gonna take a step back, but their coaching has has moved them forward. What they're yeah. doing in Buffalo, and they look like a Super Bowl contender. If not, you know, could give the Chiefs a run. Yeah, the NFC team, either the Eagles, 49ers, whoever the hell it might be, a run to win this whole damn thing. Because I love what they're doing in Buffalo. That's going to be another challenge, Sherry, uh, when they play those guys. And it could. I be. mean, dude, the command the, and the Commanders now are that nothing. Nothing is a nothing is a, a given now. You got the Commanders after that. You got the Jets after that. It's like wow, this 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 turned ugly quick. Well, um, we said it, it could spiral out of control if they lose this game. Well, they lost it. Um, I guess last thing, special teams. Six penalties. It's just – it's atrocious, bro. Um, it's had six penalties last night, all on the special teams. It's terrible. Look, I, I – look, Dave's is going nowhere, as he should not be going anywhere, right? I mean, if the Giants' season is a disaster, which where it's heading, and they win five games, four games, six games, whatever it might be, Dave's is going nowhere, okay? No, should you go anywhere. Um, But – I don't think the same coaching staff is going to be back. That I can tell you. He so said it at the. He said it, <laughs> no, 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 no. He that? said you're like, <gasps> and then you no, stopped. <laughs> he said it at the presser yesterday. But do you believe him when he said, "I'm not making. You don't make changes." Mid -year? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I thought you were going to make an observation or something else. Um, uh, do I believe him? Look, if it continues, no, you make changes. I can yeah, see I it happening. Yeah. All right. You know, I'm not going to go that far and say, well, I believe him. Right now, he's probably not. But but if this things continue, I can see Dave's going, well, I got to do something here. Yeah. Um, I just thought that somebody asked him about Bobby Johnson, the offensive line. And Dave's yeah. kind of like hesitated. And um, he kind of like, well, we're all not doing the job. We're all whatever, right? But I can tell you this. Um. I could tell you this. Hmm? Dave, Dave's is getting a little frustrated with what's going on around with the lack of progress of some units, you know. Good. Uh, I think he's starting to get very frustrated. I think he's starting to ask questions. I heard through the grapevine today that it was very, very tense in that building today. Uh, that, you know, guys – had to come up with some answers from people, and that includes up top with the big man, <laughs> Mr. Mara, John. <laughs> um, you know, I heard it was very tense in that building today. It's very, you know, the way they're losing, Jerry, it's going to be very it's embarrassing. Times. It's embarrassing. Yeah. yeah, and you're losing your fans by the third quarter at home games now, yeah. both of them. And I thought this loss was worse than week one. Yeah, I'm not going to argue. Of, because of the, the opponent, I just thought this was I'm already supposed to be a weak class. Yeah. 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 It's supposed to be in our weight class. A team that was giving up 400 yards a game. And they're giving up yeah. points, right? I mean, and your that, tweet if we're soft edges again going this week, well, they yeah. didn't. Yeah. And now they're going to a buzzsaw on the road for two games. So, um, one, of, one of them's prime time. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping they flex that out, but I don't think they please, are. Please, God. So, <laughs> I don't think they are. <laughs> so, um, not much more I can say, Jerry. I, I no, don't know. I know. You, you, what could you say? I mean, what, what what could you wear to say, well, ease the pain, I guess? I don't know. Look. Feel the dreams. Ease his pain. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not trying to be down as here, but just saying it like it is. 
Yeah. If you're looking for, you know, try, I always try to look for a few positives too. On the offensive side of the ball, I can't find one. I'd say Wandell. I was happy with Wandell. Oh, okay. Oh, I, good, good observation, Jerry. I'll give you yeah. that. I like the way Wandell's progressing. Yeah. Um, Graham Gano. That's all I got. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, oh, uh, this is one last point. I'm sorry. Maybe not last point, but, but yeah. look, this is what I don't get at times. And I blame Dave's for this. I blame Dave's. I've been reporting since the beginning of training camp that Eric Gray scares me. Eric Gray scares Jerry, and if anybody's new to this podcast or new to this Twitter account. Said it all along. I never Monday morning quarterback. I'm not one of those guys that's, that says something even though I didn't say it. And then I say, oh, yeah, I told you. Eric Gray. You know, you could document my tweets. Yep. We go back to Giant Inside a podcast. Whatever you want to do. But I've been reporting this because I see these guys all the time. And this includes media sessions during the season. We only, we only watch practice for like 20 minutes. But one of the, one of the sessions during the media uh, viewing period is special teams. Okay? And I've been reporting it. I don't feel comfortable with Eric Gray returning Punts. I don't feel comfortable with Eric Gray returning punts because I've seen him struggle through the summer into the season. It hasn't happened yet. I said it's going to happen. I said I just uh, Jerry, how much did that tell you? I said, I just, no, no, I said it all. all I just summer. don't feel right with this guy returning punts. Now he got yeah. lucky last night, and they recovered that muff. They're very fortunate it didn't happen against Arizona late night game. Right, was there was one time he came up and made that running punch. Yes, catch, yeah, makes you nervous. Very fortunate. Yeah, but I look at this, and we asked T Mac about it. I think at the beginning of the season, before the season started, maybe after the Dallas game, whatever it was. You know, are you comfortable? Are you going to continue with Gray? Are you co- and and they give these answers like, oh, we're 100 confident in him. Yeah, and I'm saying to myself, no, well, these are the professionals, right? <laughs> I'm just some dope. On the side, Chris Bizignano, you know, with a credential watching this, but what could Chris Bizignano know? I mean, you know. He's just, but what I'm seeing doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> I, I mean, there was numerous times. I've got to mention his name, too, because he, I think he's pretty good at what he does, and that's Dan Duggan of The Athletic. Yeah. I mean, t- uh, there's been times me and Dan were stood next to each other, and we're watching Gray, and he's, you know, not even windy out. He's like, Miss T-. I said to Dan before this, I said, Dan, how do you feel about Gray? You know, like I'm not, I wouldn't be comfortable with this kid at all. You know, yeah, yeah. Doug was the same way. He was like, I don't know what the hell this kid's going to cost him a game. Now he didn't cost him a game last night. Yeah, but it could have cost him the Arizona game if he muffed when that boy came running up, right? Yeah. And then last night, Dave's. The point I'm making is that uh, Dave's gets him out of the last night. Dory goes in, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, Dory, right, Jerry. Yeah, and that I was gonna ask you about that too. He lets two balls bounce in front of him. I don't know what the hell. You have on. Sterling Shepard on the Sterling Shepard can do it, can he? Shep could do it. He catches every ball. He knows how to come up and catch a ball fair. Catch yeah, like, that's, ball that's, that's that pissed me off too. I was like, why is Shepard not doing but this? I'm I'm like, guys, if a dope like me could <laughs> see this all camp, <clears throat> what the hell are you guys looking at? Are you like are you force feeding it? Right, like. Why are you force feeding this rookie? It's just not there yet. Why are if you making I'm, it happen? <laughs> if I am feeling uncomfortable on the side watching this kid gray, and, and every time a ball goes up again, I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. you know, I yeah. don't know about this kid in a, in a big spot in a game. I wouldn't feel. How the hell does the coaching staff not see that and feel, as they always say, 100% confident in the kid? Well, yeah. what happened to that 100% confident last night? He muffed that one. And yeah. Dave said, get him out of there. Yeah. You know, it, look, looked ter- it looked terrible. I, I, I mean, I don't care. If I'm a head coach of a football team and I'm watching that all summer, there's no way I feel comfortable with that kid. I'm like, well, you know what? Just catch the damn ball. Get Shep back there. Get and fair catch, fair catch it. Fair fine. catch it. Fine. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Because I don't feel comfortable with this kid. Yeah. And my special teams coach kept coming up to me going, hey, Biz, I'm telling you, I'm 100% confident. I'm telling you. I'd still be like, mm-hmm. team. What the F are you watching? Because I'm watching him in practice, and this kid is shaky. And you're telling me I should go with this kid 100%? Oh, yeah. i still be like, T-Mac, listen, I love you, brother. But I'm going with somebody else back there because I'm, yeah. I'm the head coach, yeah. and I don't feel confident in this kid yeah. at all. Well, mm. 
Last night, you saw everybody. You saw what the hell I've been talking about. And that didn't cost them, right? And it didn't cost him a game, nothing like that. But he got him the hell out of it after that. I don't know if you're going to see him back there again. I don't know, maybe depending on the circumstance of the game, whatever it might be. But he got him out of there real quick, right, dude? Yeah, and, you, and, and to your credit, you said it all to me like, I, I'm not comfortable with this. And um, it was funny. R real quick story. I, I was happened to be in an event with Phil McConkey the other night. He told a story about how Parcells made him catch punts. <laughs> now, I believe most of it, but made him catch punts, he says, for about four straight hours. And he said he dropped the last one. <laughs> and Parcells lost his mind on him. He's like, McConkey, you don't catch this – you can't catch a punt. You're off this team. And it's just, you know, that that's, I'm not saying there was extremes, but that was a guy who was shorthanded would catch every punt and you were confident. Um, and, and you got a guy who's screaming at him and yelling at him. And this, you know, now we're just with Eric Gray and I don't know. I mean, like you said, Chris, you're the one seeing it in camp and you're like, why are they confident in this guy? You know, it's not happening. And then last night we saw it and he got lucky. I think it was what the, uh, the Cardinal game or the 49er game, one of them, we ran up and caught it. But uh, you can see this coming, man. It is what it is, but I don't know. Yeah. 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 So, hey, look, we'll, we'll talk about, <coughs> excuse me, the next game Yeah. during the week. And I guess, you know, what they have to do. And I don't think you're going to see Andrew Thomas either, man. I don't, I'd be surprised if he plays Sunday. I think Saquon will be back. But we'll when see. When do you think Thomas can come back? Like, half, like week I eight? Maybe, I think he maybe has a shot at the Buffalo game, you know. Okay. If I had a guess right now, I would say Buffalo game. If he doesn't re-aggravate it. <coughs> Excuse me. If he doesn't re-aggravate it. Um, look, they just went out and signed an old friend, J Justin Pugh. He's gonna yeah. he'll be on a practice squad. I'm, I don't know if they could catch him up and get him up to speed for Sunday, but you know, we'll see what he has left. Yeah. You know, we'll see what he has left. So can't hurt. Good stuff, man. Um, all right, guys, hang in there. Sundays are giant days. We will come back sometime this week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>